Are you a hardworking business owner striving for success online? There is help. Welcome to the School of Internet Marketing podcast, featuring candid conversations and inspiring stories of online success. Now here's your host. Hi, it's James Martell here, founder of the School of Internet Marketing, and today I'm your host, and I'll be speaking with Ryan Carmody, founder of HealthySmoothieHQ.com, and today we'll be talking about traffic building, and specifically how Ryan grew his website traffic from zero to 2,000 visitors a day. Now, before Ryan joins us, just a reminder to our listeners that if you have questions at any time, you can visit us on Facebook at facebook.com slash gogreatminds. Ryan is an internet entrepreneur and he's also very much into health and nutrition and he's combined his passion for health with his desire to develop a successful internet business by creating and launching Healthy Smoothie HQ back in 2011. Listeners uh, may know Ryan from uh, episode number 16 where we talked about uh, how he has developed his email list and subscriber base to new uh, subscribers of between 40 and 50 per day. And today what I'd like to do is talk with Ryan about how he's gone about building traffic from zero to 2,000 visitors a day. Ryan, thanks for joining me again. Thanks for having me on, James. Great to be back. We had a great conversation about uh, uh, your website in, uh, in episode number 16. We talked about specifically your email list and how you built out, uh, how, how you've developed the audience and how you are now bringing between, uh, I think you said 40 and 50 new subscribers per day. And of course, that's a result of the traffic that's on the site and you having things set up properly to uh, give them an incentive to subscribe. What I'd like to talk to you about is traffic building. Uh, of course, now the newsletter does bring them back to the website. I know you talked about uh, you have a autoresponder series that uh, also brings them back when a new subscriber subscribes to the site or to your newsletter. Uh, a series of 25 emails is then triggered uh, to the new subscriber and it goes out over time on a schedule. And of course, when they receive that email, many of them come back to the site, which adds to the traffic. Uh, before we get into the specifics about your site and how you've gone about building out the traffic, let's give listeners who may not have heard the uh, the first episode if you would share a little bit about uh, your 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 story and uh, and also your story as to why you created the site. Okay, uh, about five years ago, um, I decided that it was time to uh, take some steps to improve my health, and I wasn't sure what that was going to entail at the time. But um, you know, one of the, the strategies I tried was making smoothies for breakfast, and I quickly fell in love with that because it's fairly easy fairly simple and it's a great way to get uh, a massive amount of nutrition into you know one, one smoothie uh, considering all of the different various ingredients fruits vegetables spices herbs superfoods that you can you can uh, toss into your blender and whip up so I, I began doing that and you know quickly became kind of a, a smoothie fanatic if you will and you know over the year you know as the years went on I started to get uh, you know more and more people asking me about what I was doing you know, as far as making smoothies, as well as what I was doing to improve my health, because it was you know somewhat noticeable. And about uh, two and a half years ago, I decided to launch uh, HealthySmoothieHQ.com to share with friends, family, and everybody, anybody else out there that that wants to uh, improve their health. Um, so I launched the site, and and I also launched that. Uh, I guess actually, primarily the reason I launched that, honestly, James, was to was to get into affiliate marketing. So I'd been on the sidelines of affiliate marketing, if you will, for uh, quite a while, and this was finally my chance to get in the game. So it was really a perfect fit for me to take something that I was very passionate about, that I was that I knew other people would be interested in as well, and I'm um, you know combine that into you know launching this site so that I could also uh, delve into this fun world of affiliate marketing. I do know that uh, many listeners uh, may not be familiar with uh, the term affiliate marketing, and essentially, what an affiliate, uh, what affiliate marketing is, or an affiliate program is, it was basically started by Amazon. Uh, so the story goes back in the mid 1990s when somebody called up uh, the company and wanted to promote the Amazon books 
back uh, way back on her website and that was I guess the, the kernel of the idea for Amazon where they created a program what they call the associate program which we now call affiliate affiliate programs or affiliate marketing where we get paid a referral to refer customers to companies like Amazon and there's literally tens of thousands of companies now that'll pay for referrals and it's an exciting uh, exciting industry and it's been fun to be part of it now Ryan you mentioned you wanted to get into affiliate marketing and uh, although we're going to be talking about traffic building as it relates to your website these strategies actually apply to any website and I know you and I had a chance to talk uh, I believe it was yesterday about some of the things that you did to create this traffic and to build out I, I believe in the last episode you said 1700 to 2200 or 2300 visitors per Per day and I do know to some small business owners and even affiliate marketers that's a lot of traffic they may have never been there and I also experience or have conversations with other students of the school who says what's really going on there how do we build traffic like that how do we get from my 50 visitors a day up to a thousand or two thousand and so on and you and I were talking about a number of the things that you've done, and I'd like to cover those off if we could pull back the curtains a little bit here. But I think you and I really basically isolated one of the primary th reasons your site is doing so well, and that is, and you alluded to it in uh, the description and your, and your story, is that you're really, really passionate about this topic, and you write specifically for the visitor. That's absolutely correct. With that in mind, we do know in this era of Google, and of course, there's many places that we can get traffic uh, from. Google is probably the 800 pound gorilla in the room and usually where we focus our attention. Google is absolutely in love with real content. We do know they're, they have a, a whole area within the algorithm where they're looking to authenticate the popularity of the content. And if you've got popular content, it can really give you an advantage up and above over everything that you're doing. And in your particular case, you mentioned to me that uh, you you develop two distinct types of, of posts on your site. Could you explain that? Absolutely. And in developing the content, if you are writing from personal experience, I, I have to say that it, it makes it so much easier. It goes so much smoother. And you feel, you know, it's, it's authentic. It's actually you writing from your personal experience. You don't feel so much, you know, scammy or dirty. Um, but uh, to answer your question, so on my smoothie site, I have smoothie recipes. So those are you know actual blog posts where I um, have a, you know a recipe. So it's what I, I typically do with those is I'll have a, a little background on maybe a few of the ingredients, some of the health benefits, and then you know obviously I'll have actually actually have the recipe itself and some directions for people to to make that at home if they'd like. So I have, I primarily have those types of posts on my site, but I also have what I would consider uh, more in-depth, somewhat uh, epic posts. And those are typically quite a bit longer, maybe 1,500 words. And in those, I'll cover some of the more popular superfoods of the day, so cacao, maca, coconut oil, for example. And, and then I also have other ones on a weight loss or uh, energizing smoothies or some of the other health topics or health concerns that people are looking to address via smoothies. You mentioned, uh, again, writing from personal experience. Uh, many business owners are a little bit shy when it comes to writing their own content for their site. They may think, well, I haven't written since I left college, or I haven't written since I left high school, or I'm just not a writer and I would prefer to uh, hire somebody who's more of a professional. And that has some advantages uh, as well. But there's an article that I have in front of me. It's called In the Aftermath of Penguin 2.0. Uh, and it's talking about ranking and Penguin is the na nickname for one of the Google updates to the uh, the search results but it says Google search places a premium on authenticity and when you're writing from personal experience I don't think and I think you might agree with this or may agree with this there's nothing really more authentic than that somebody who's writing from personal experience Oh, I would agree 100%. So a business owner that has that personal experience, they would be better off to sit down and write the content themselves in many cases, or even just rough it out, get the personal experiences, the stories, the little antidotes, all of all of the all of the nuances that only somebody with personal experience would actually know 
that could get poured into an article. You mentioned a second type of content. You talked about a lengthy and in-depth informational piece. Speak to that if you would. Sure. So in those pieces, and, and um, just to give you know, listeners an example, a recipe post is typically about 500 words, four or 500 words, and it will take me anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half to put the entire post together. Now on these uh, more in-depth lengthy posts, those can typically take several hours, three, four or five hours. And that's typically not, it's, it's actually, I shouldn't say it's typically, it's never that I sit down and spend that much time at once. It's usually over several days. So maybe I'll start with uh, the template, kind of the outline of what I want to cover in the article. And then maybe the next day or, or day after I'll sit down and I'll start to write out a couple of the, uh, couple of those sections. And then you know, I'll do that repeatedly for a few days until I have my, my finished article. And then of course I'll you know sleep on it at least one night and come back and do some final edits before I actually publish it or schedule it to be published. You mentioned when it comes to brainstorming, when we had that conversation yesterday, that you've got a file for ideas. Uh, speak to that. Yeah, so I, I, have, I have a bunch of files with ideas, as a matter of fact. Um, what I have is, um, is on my phone I have an app and then I have some files on my computer in which I store all of the different ideas that I could potentially use for either smoothie, smoothie recipes or the other type of posts that I have on my site. So that, because you never know when those are going to come to you. You could be out and about at the mall or the movie theater, who knows where, and you could come up with this great idea for a, a blog post and then, you know, it, it leaves you. So I think having something on hand, it, you know, with smartphones today, it's pretty easy. To, to, to use one of the apps to, to store all of those ideas. And eventually, um, over, I don't know, three, four months when I first got going, I built up this pretty lengthy list of ideas that I could pull from to, uh, to write blog posts for. And now it's the point where I have, you know, it's almost somewhat overwhelming because there's so many different topics and subjects that I'd like to cover. But it, it's real easy to go and, and pick from there, uh, to, to pick out of there to, to come up with my next you know, recipe post or, or blog post so that I don't have to just sit down from scratch and try to brainstorm, okay, what, what am I going to write this week? What, what kind of content do I put out this week? Um, it just makes the whole process that much, that much easier. Content scheduling is another uh, topic that is uh, something I know you do very well at. Uh, and it, it really ties, I would think, into the, the file for the files for ideas because uh, I think you you have, in fact, I know you have a content schedule and you've also got a, a game plan in place for your content. Maybe speak to that for listeners. Sure. So, yes, a, a content publishing schedule is uh, extremely important and beneficial for, for everybody to employ. So it's basically um, whether it's two weeks or two months or even six months, you, you sort of plan out in advance what you uh, are going to write about or cover in that time span. So for example, for me, I may sit down on a Sunday or, or the first of the month, first Sunday of the month and, and determine, okay, I'm gonna put out these uh, two blog posts each week for the next month. Uh, you know, maybe have two recipe posts the first week and then a, one of my epic posts the second week and then two more recipes the third week. And, um, and I'll actually schedule in, so what's the actual smoothie recipe going to be? And that also helps in my case because I need to go out and actually buy those ingredients so that I can make the smoothie and take my pictures and speak from, you know, like I said, authenticity and then from real experience. But then there's no guesswork as to what you're going to actually uh, publish for a given week or month. You don't, you, you know in advance and you're also kind of giving your subconscious mind a chance to, to mull it over and come up with some, some good ideas so that you're not just sitting down one evening to, to write a blog post and you have no idea what you're going to write about, coming up with that idea and then actually going through it and writing that, for me, definitely doesn't work and I would assume it's not going to work for most people either. I'm sure we have some listeners right now that are sitting here a little bit puzzled. James called the show from zero to 2,000 visitors a day and here all we're doing is talking about content. Let's talk, uh, if you would, to how content applies. I'm looking, I've got an SEO checklist in my hand, and it's something we share in the uh, Daily Traffic Blueprint course in the School of Internet Marketing. And it's a, pay, it's, a, it's a little checklist that a website owner should go through when they're creating a page of content that they want to see ranked highly in the search results. And the number one item on this list, and there's, let me count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten items on the list that uh, are absolute must 
musts if you want to see your pages rank highly in the uh, in the results. At number one, though, right off the top, and this is usually where people fall down the most. The other ones are actually almost data entry. Number one, though, is content that is high in quality, relevant, and written for the visitor, not the search engine. Talk to us, if you would, about how content has translated into traffic for you. Sure, James. I really attribute my my uh, exponential growth in traffic to consistently uh, creating content. And it, that's really what it has been, exponential growth. So when I launched the site uh, in 2011, of course, there weren't many visitors, 20, 30 a day maybe. But um, you know, over time, as I continued to content, as I continued to publish content, the, the traffic steadily began to grow and grow and grow to the point where I am getting, um, you know, around 2,000 visitors a, a day uh, today. And and I attribute that to um, a few things. One, I think it's pretty well known that Google definitely likes sites that are updated regularly, especially if they're updated regularly with high quality content, because ultimately that's what they're in the business to do is serve quality content to their searchers. Um, but by also uh, creating content consistently, you're you're creating that many more pages on your website. You know, I have about, gosh, I'm closing in on 200 now, which is, is pretty good. I've come a long way. I have 200 pages, roughly, that Google can then crawl and index and that people can potentially uh, you know, come across in the search results. That's such a good point. A lot of uh, small business owners, I'm thinking of a local pub here that I do a little bit of work on their site for them. And uh, the many, many business owners that I've run across over the years who ask me the question, do I need to add content continuously? Don't, why do I need to blog? Why do I need to be uh, adding content ongoing? I'm thinking specifically right now of a chiropractor down in the California area that I was chatting with uh, who asked that question. Uh, very, very nice guy and just, just was kind of puzzled as to why. And you, you alluded to it. It's because you now, you're, you're basically have the ability to, I guess, widen the net. Each of these articles uh, that you create, they, they can focus on different keywords, can't they? Absolutely, and they, and they all do. So there's a slew of, of keywords that I now um, receive traffic for. One thing that's surprising, too, uh, for those who haven't actually gone through this process, you, you mentioned it could be one informational article this week, a couple of recipes next week, followed by another informational article the following, and then the following, another couple of recipes. So you can get in, once you get into the rhythm, it's, it's not that difficult. What's always so fun to do is to have a look at a Google Analytics report. I do know with my wife's site, epilepsymoms.com, uh, you have a look at her her report, and because she has so much content like you on her site, you open up uh, the Google Analytics report, and you look at the pages and the keyword phrases she was found for, and I'm sure, you and I haven't talked about this yet, but I'm sure in your case it's the same. She's ranking for literally thousands of keyword phrases, just because she's got so much content that just happens to cover so much of the topic that she's relating to. Yeah, absolutely. That's precisely the same, the same situation for me when I open up my Google Analytics account. It's, it's all that, what do they call it, long tail traffic, where you just have so many different keyword combinations that, um, that it's driving traffic. And I think part of that goes back to, uh, I read this recently, a stat that 40% you know, of the searches on Google every day are brand new. They've never been searched for. So you have a chance to you know, get a piece of that pie. I actually read that stat too. I remember interviewing uh, Jim Morris from NicheBot. This is a keyword, uh, a keyword tool. And he, he mentioned something to that effect to me many years ago as well. And I was actually amazed. If you think about it, 50% of the searches that are done on Google back then, and you mentioned 40%, it's probably a little more current today, have never ever been searched before the amazing thing about words on a page is they come in all different combinations and sometimes you can optimize for them and rank highly for that particular phrase or set of phrases other times you just happen to rank just because you've covered the topic better than anybody else and google can see that that topic is well well uh well covered in your article and let's talk a little bit about local search in your particular case we're talking more of about wanting to rank nationally maybe the entire united states of america maybe into canada even uk so maybe some international traffic as well let's talk a little bit about your strategy here and morph it towards a small business owner you know you're competing ryan with everybody let's just take the u.s for example who are attempting to rank for the same keyword phrases you're ranking for. This strategy, the same strategy of adding a couple pages or one or two pages a week on a different topic, written from personal experience, so it's authentic, 
and you're a small business owner in a, in a in a city or town that's a fraction of the size of the entire continent uh, or at least of the United States how well would you think a small business owner would do if they could get on a steady diet of uh, adding fresh content to their their site every week I think that you would be amazed by the results that you would see from doing that that uh, it's uh, obviously not you're not going to be an overnight success but if you continuously put that work in to produce good quality content. And you emphasized that that earlier. And I, I do want to say you definitely want to only put out nothing but quality content. So if you're rushed one week, I would say don't put anything out as opposed to, to putting something that's extremely quality out there. But but by following this strategy, and then of course, you know, there's a few other traffic building tips that um, that you uh, teach as well, James. I think you'd, you'd be surprised by how much traffic you'd, you'd eventually see from your efforts. Absolutely, and I've seen, and I've seen I've seen many many business owners do it where they absolutely dominate their local area, and you almost got to feel sorry for their competition a little bit because they really don't understand, they don't get it, because if you really break it down, it's not that complicated. All we're really talking about is adding a real piece of content written from personal experience. We're not talking about a literary masterpiece here. We're talking about being real, being authentic, and being consistent. And that's another thing that you've done uh, oh so well is uh, consistently added content. And then maybe we can end off with this, uh, uh, and that's a return visitor strategy. I know we talked about it in the earlier podcast, so we can just lightly touch upon it now. And I would encourage listeners to go back and listen to uh, episode 16 with Ryan, where we talked more in depth about email marketing and keeping those visitors coming back but you have a newsletter and you also have an email autoresponder series that is triggered when somebody subscribes along with your opt-in book give us give us a little synopsis of how that works and how that continues to keep people coming back on um, on the nav bar on the right hand side of my site as well as on let's see my about page and the bottom of all of my posts I have a little um, opt-in offer of a uh, ebook, a little recipe smoothie ebook that contains about 20, 15, 20 recipes. And by by uh, visitors uh, submitting their uh, first name and email address, they can gain access to that ebook for free. And then they're also uh, added to my email new- newsletter. So that has been a great way to not only uh, get repeat visitors and, and increase my traffic, but to stay in touch with people that that have come to visit my site because. What is it? Seventy-five. Well, here's just another good stat: seventy-five percent of the people that visit your site never come back again. And by doing that, um, I also am creating you know, additional valuable content to to put out to all the people that are interested in, in, in healthy smoothies and continue to further build that relationship with my readers and show that I'm here to, to you know offer nothing but good value and content. And, you know, and in return, I'll, you know, I'll push a few things here and there. But that that strategy has has worked out very well for me. And of course, we cover all of this in detail in the Daily Traffic Blueprint course, which is designed for affiliates. It's designed for small business owners who are looking to increase their online exposure and to increase the number of leads and sales coming through their door. And that's available at the School of Internet Marketing. And just if I may give a little plug for the school, the cost to enroll in the School of Internet Marketing is $47 a month. You're not locked in in any way. And that gives you access to all of the courses in the school, including this daily traffic blueprint we're alluding to or I'm alluding to. And also all interviews. Uh, there's a series of Coffee Talk interviews, where which is a more expanded version of the style of podcast where we get into a lot more depth about how things work. And those are also included. There's 90, I think 90 of them now and growing uh, every month. Uh, Success stories from other business owners who are sharing real life tips and strategies of what they're doing to uh, succeed online. Ryan, any final tips, uh, anything you'd like to offer as maybe encouragement to listeners who are maybe sitting down around 30 visitors a month or zero or just getting started? A word of encouragement for those who are, are shy to actually get out there and write and put count, content out of the internet. I was in that boat for a long time and believe me, my, my writing muscle was atrophied and as weak as it could be, you, you couldn't imagine. And you know, as you start to do it, it's like, it's like working any other muscle. You, you, you get into a rhythm and, and you build that up and you get to the point to get to the point where it's really actually pretty easy and it's pretty fun and, and you really start to enjoy the process. So for those that are a little apprehensive or you know, maybe overwhelmed by it, 
believe me, once you get going on it, it's like anything else. You'll, you'll develop that rhythm, and you'll, you'll really have fun with it, and, and the success will be tremendous. I'm going to encourage uh, listeners to uh, subscribe to your newsletter uh, in a moment. While, just before I do that, though, I'd like to put you on the spot, if I could. I know it's uh, the 26th of September today, 2013. We interviewed you exactly 14 days ago. And at that point, your email newsletter list had grown from zero when you began it to 3,908 subscribers. So 14 days later, exactly two weeks later, do you happen to know what uh, what that number is now? I, I do. Thankfully, I'm sitting in front of my computer. I have 4,654 subscribers. 4,654 subscribers. So that's uh, that's over 700, almost 740-ish new subscribers in a two-week period. Uh, upwards of, I guess, 1,400, almost 1,500 in a month. Imagine, listeners, to those who uh, may not yet have a newsletter, and I know Ryan in the last episode says it's the number one thing that you should do, and I agree, is to get that email newsletter list growing, and he shares a lot of great tips on that. So again, episode 16, go have a listen to that. But uh, imagine being able to invite 1,500 of your best clients back to your business every month and have that grow from 1500 this month to 3000 next month and get an opportunity to invite them back to your site. What kind of a difference would that uh, make on your, uh, your bottom line? Ryan from Healthy Smoothie HQ, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks, James. It was a lot of fun. Thank you for listening. To learn more about the School of Internet Marketing and to get access to all exclusive courses and interviews, visit theschoolofinternetmarketing.com. That's www.theschoolofinternetmarketing.com. That's www.theschoolofinternetmarketing.com.